Hello, my friends, and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Kieran Lewis, a freelance graphic designer based in London. And today's stream, we have the seasonal pro, and I say that not lightly, Adobe Live host and creative director, Alex Lazarus. Alex, how you doing, man? Fantastic, man. I am so stoked to be working with you today. This is going to be a, a collaboration of the minds, including chat. <laughs> I love yes. you guys. Hello, everyone. Um, we're going to have some memes, some memes. Um, oh, help Buddha Val's here. Uh, we're gonna have some fun though. So yeah, super excited. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Alex Lazarus. I own an agency called Lazarus, um, kind of based everywhere, especially during COVID, like all over the world. Um, but yeah, love it. We work on like experiential brand stuff from translating brand experience from digital to physical and everything in between. We love doing it all. Um, so yeah. Awesome, okay. man. I'm, I'm ready for this collaboration. It's been, it's been months in the, in the waiting. Um, and again, a massive welcome to our lovely audience. If you're just joining us, if you're watching us on YouTube, Behance, you know, send some love in the chat. Where are you guys streaming from? Um, I can see it's coming in thick and fast. We've got Cody, Misha, Steve, Barbara, Paco uh, and Shauna and many, many more. So a massive welcome to you lovely people. And like Alex said, today's going to be like a highly interactive stream. So we want to get you guys involved as much as possible. So any um, suggestions, advice, definitely share it um, directly in the chat. Um, just one little thing to flag before we get into the real um, thick of it. If you missed the previous stream, uh, you can check uh, the replay on Behance and YouTube. Uh, check out photographer and digital artist Becca Bjork, uh, where she will be showing you how to create some fantastical worlds from 3D models and photos using Photoshop. So Alex, my man, should we uh, take it away? Find out what you're working on today. Let's do it. So Steve's asking the hard hitting questions already in chat. We'd love to see it. He's asking <laughs> how much comic papyrus will there be today? So in yes. case you are not familiar with where I work, you can go to be.net slash Alex Lazarus or behance.net slash Alex Lazarus and check it out there. Um, but Steve, just for you, look at that beauty right there. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're familiar with the typeface comic papyrus, but it is a classic Alex Lazarus meme font or a mm. meme font. I love to bring it into design wherever we can. It's honestly <laughs> you like set the you, ball, man. <laughs> yeah, it's that. honestly <laughs> like you know, like all, there's all those memes about like or sorry, memes. We pronounce it memes also on uh, Adobe Live. There's a lot of memes about designers spending a lot of time trying to figure out the perfect typeface for all their projects. As you can see, mm. I've got a ton already on the left side of the screen. But there's nothing quite as delicious as a beautiful <laughs> marriage between two typefaces you love yes. and adore so much. So Comic Sans plus Papyrus, beautiful. Just oh, man. 10 out of 10. We've already got Sean already. He's already laughing too hard. And we're like a few minutes into this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> guys, get, get, get those. What are you guys feeling? Comet Sands, is that your cup of tea or uh, nice? I love that. And the Lauren yeah. Epsom in there in all its glory. Great. Yeah. I love when you have friends that are saying that I'm judging you so hard right now. After <laughs> they've known me for yeah. so long. They, You just at this point have to love and accept me for who I am. And that's it. You know, that's that's, that's what about. true friendships like, Sean. Can the typeface like ruin friendships and marriages? I hope not. I hope it's one of those ones that can bring people together, right? It's like the <laughs> differences is what brings us more. Exactly. Forward. Just like Comic Sans and Papyrus. <laughs> it's a beautiful yes. love story. Better than Love, love Twilight. <laughs> all right. So let's send it in to, all right, what we need from you, chat. So we are thinking a futuristic tech type brand. I could see this working really well for like, I don't know, NFTs, blockchain, retrofuturism. I don't know if you've seen the new Hyundai concept car. It's a little bit retro, a little futuristic. Mm. It's based in like hydrogen or something. It's pretty yeah. cool. I don't know. We can go pretty wild. I think we're just going to keep it pretty ambiguous. For me, cool. this project is obviously a branding project. It's a graphic design project. I want to make something visually stunning at the end of the day, but mm. I also want to give you all the tools to take your project to the next level. For me, a logo is just that. It's a logo, it's not your full brand. So mm. I'm definitely gonna work on the logo. We're gonna get something to like a pretty good spot, I think. But then I wanna show you some kind of fun tips and tricks to get your project to the next level. So awesome, man. while I was researching for this role or this project specifically, I was like working on like, you work for them. It's a great resource for like typefaces, graphic treatments, things like that. 
Um, and I saw these like cool little pieces. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, let's make some posters on the stream. That would be awesome. You can buy these PNGs if you want, but PNGs are pretty limited. Um, you get one dimension of it. You can't rotate it. Well, you can rotate it, but it's not going to give you the depth that you would get from like a 3D object. Mm. So I think we'll probably move a little bit into dimension this afternoon, cool. maybe a little bit tomorrow as well. I want to show you how you can make images similar to this with your own graphic design treatment in dimension. So you've already got the tools. It's already part of your Creative Cloud uh, subscription. So you might as well leverage it and then make custom bespoke pieces for your mm. own work. I think this is a really good example of like what we can do as well. They've got an iridescent one. We can light the objects. We can put the um, the shading and the materiality on each of the objects and then nice. light it in a way that creates it to be like really engaging. Um, and we'll probably do some like mock-ups like this where it's like, okay, cool. You can start to see the brand come together. We've got these like mm. 3D elements, kind of amb ambiguous, but we would love names chat. We want names for the brand. Uh, bring them in guys, bring them in. <laughs> objects, things that you want. We, we can easily go to Adobe Stock and we can grab some of these pieces and we can start to like leverage it. I was already looking earlier for some like orbs. Um, for some reason, typing an S at the end of orb actually mm. gives you more options. Uh, <laughs> You're so, gonna fall that little plural at the end. It's just like, right? <laughs> <laughs> never works that way. Uh, but that. like this, this actually like this abstract model here, it looks like um, mm. maybe it's a, uh, like an ornament or something. This mm. piece right here already kind of starts to feel like some of these, uh, these shapes that we see on the pack. So mm. we can go in, we can light it, we can texture it, or we can make it however we want and then pull it into our project. So we'll get into that later. Um, nice. But in the meantime, let's start sending it into some, uh, some graphic design. Sounds good. And uh, guys, like Alex said, man, this is highly, highly, <clears throat> excuse me, interactive. So I also have that, you know, that saying where no such thing as a bad idea um, at that very early stage anyway. So definitely throw names in there. And even going for those visuals you're showing us, Alex, it, it feels tangible, man. Like it feels like you kind of want to grab almost like Flubber, that Disney movie, if you get that kind of vibe. But, yeah. Um, yeah, set the bar there nicely. But um, but yeah, like Alex said, any sort of names or things you could think of that will work quite well with the theme, you know, get them in the chat um, and I'll share them directly with Alex. So yeah. Uh, so while we're waiting on names from chat, I pulled a name earlier. I was like, I literally went to like random name generator Latin and yeah. I was trying to pull from ancient dead languages. Uh, and I was trying to find something that kind of like could work and be ambiguous and kind of techie feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. and I stumbled upon this word VIX, V-I-X, uh, meaning hardly, scarcely, barely, sometimes with dumb. I don't, I don't understand the context of all of it. It's all Latin to me. Uh, but I think that scarcity idea seems to work kind of well. So in mm -hmm. the meantime, if you're wanting to play at home at home, I'm going to work with VIX until we get a better name from chat. And if not, we'll just run with it till the end. We'll run with Vic. I feel like an X was guaranteed to be in there, right? As a, as a, at least, uh, as a, if almost for like countdown, if you know that sort of game show, you have like the missing letters oh, that hang. Um, thank yeah. you. Oh, countdown is about. so good. <laughs> you get that um, in the US? I don't know. You get that in the US. Oh, but... I got my yeah. methods, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that and uh, what's it called? Uh, Taskmaster are my favorite. Oh, dude. Now we're talking about freelancers during the day when they should be working, but they're, they're watching. <laughs> Daytime TV. Um, I can see already. Sean's already said I can. I I can love and accept you for who you are, but I still judge your decisions. There we go, Sean. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take. Okay. Uh, that's a good friendship there. I'll take that. <laughs> so Brilliant. I feel like with a three-letter word. Originally, I was thinking I love bitmap and I love this kind of like digital tech, mm. kind of retro stuff that's happening in the the graphic design world right now. So I wanted to find a way to kind of like bring that into this project. Um, with a three letter name, mm. I don't really need something so thin or even a monospace. Like this monospace could work. This is proto mono. Let me see how it goes. It's, eh. it's like, it needs something else. Mm. I feel like if you're going to put like a URL in there, maybe it's like a website, it's like VIX.io or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that could work really well. You kind of need like a little something. Like it, mm. it needs to stand on its own, I think. I'm thinking like dot AI for some reason. <laughs> it doesn't work to anywhere, but that'd be cool. Yeah, it can work. Wait, that, <laughs> doesn't dot AI work now as a URL? Does that work? Because like, uh, I guess you can customize however you wish, right? As long as you buy, yeah, that'd be cool. 
But so yeah, I'm just trying to play around with some like wider, maybe some extended types. Uh, mm. Try to see how that works. I can also use my filter over here if I want to. I can go down to filters, fonts, um, and I can kind of classify if I want like thicker weights, heavier weights, uh, extended widths. I'll click both of those and see what I can get from um, Adobe Creative Cloud or fonts. Um, let me see here. Got show activated. I don't want that. Do I want that? Oh, okay. Uh, and that should pull all of the Adobe fonts, I believe, unless I've set a filter wrong. Um, I can see as well. We've got some, uh, we've got Sean. He said, um, as an ex ex possible suggestion, <clears throat> excuse me, is a uh, Bix or Bitvix, Bitvix. It almost, that's almost like a serial. I love that, but it still works though. Definitely. The Bix is quite cool. Bix. Um, Bix. Or Bix. Yeah. Everyone's jumping on the Bix now. Actually, we've got a few, I feel like, you like <laughs> people Bix are smoking. Bix? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Are you on the Bix fence? Are you in the Vix fence, guys? Let us know. Let us know in, in the chat what takes your fancy. What a tongue um, twister. It is pretty much. That's so funny. Bix, Vix, or Bit Vix. Let's see how we got here. Man, I'm I quite curious. Uh, I was going to say, buddy, like, so in terms of like your back, because obviously I've been watching loads of your streams before, but like for anyone who perhaps are quite new to background when you're working what are the main programs that you tend to like what's your bread and butter in terms of what you operate in yeah programs? for sure i would say that illustrator is like 80 percent of what i'm working in depending on mm. it really depends on what phase of the client project we're in right if we're in like the the logo generation stage even some of the type pairing stuff i'll do a lot of that inside of illustrator okay. um but then eventually moving it all the mock-ups are done in photoshop um, web design will be done in like XD. Um, I've actually started moving all of my clients once in the handoff phase into express libraries. So like creative cloud nice. libraries for everything. And then just building templates for them mm. inside express. Um, so through and through big Adobe fan. Mm. Um, that makes it so much easy, easier, right? For the client, just to kind of have that, uh, that so streamlined cool. process, which yeah, just cuts out a lot of faff, which you don't, which no one really needs. So. Um, I'm down for that. Definitely. Yeah. And honestly, like, I think it's also just streamlined so much of our process as well. It's, mm. it's kind of a, historically, it's kind of a pain to set up templates and stuff and to hand it off to a client. Like it was a mm. lot of work. You have to build a lot of guidelines to get it to a good enough spot. Mm. Um, so yeah, honestly, having that ability to just move it all into express and nice. leverage our creative cloud libraries that we're already sharing with the client has made it so much simpler for us to just hand over files and get it to them in a good enough spot. That they're like extremely happy with it. Mm. No, that's awesome. Man. And again, if you're, if you're, you're watching this, you're very much new to, you know, the Adobe live hemisphere, you know, massive welcome. And, and definitely what Alex was saying that there's a lot of, um, tools that you guys have, you know, at your disposals, whether it's the, you know, lives that we do or the different programs we have as well. Um, and it just makes your life easier as really as creatives, you know, whether you're a photographer, fine art, fashion, graphic design, um, there's always updates, there's always kind of things to kind of keep you guys you know, in the loop and to keep things a lot more easier and more streamlined. So um, to definitely keep, keep on board with with what's going on in the uh, Adobe world, because there's a lot, <laughs> there's always a lot. And it's changing constantly, like it's, mm. it's pretty amazing. Uh, Steve says that AI sure is a web suffix, try test.ai um, apparently. Look at that, it's probably Steve's website to be honest. <laughs> He's just phoning these little Easter eggs and he <laughs> Shauna said a uh, Bix Bix but I mean that's a tongue twister. Bix bucks. Bix bucks. <laughs> I, I feel like we like set like three set letters the and then everybody's <laughs> like, oh just change it one. Just add on top. <laughs> yeah. You guys can make up, you know, more than just you know changing one. They're so letter. they're so drawn to your Bix Vix, Alex, that they don't want to leave because it's <laughs> they've drawn attached. And now we've got bricks. So um we're slowly <laughs> Making yeah. our own, but um, yeah, like we said, definitely get them in. No such thing as a bad idea, we promise. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. It's actually not, I kind of like that mono, uh, mono space. So on that topic of, um, without going way too off piece, I feel like we could definitely, because we're into that sort of style of sci-fi, but are you into your, with this being obviously a passion project, is that your kind of vibe? Is that what you're into in terms of sci-fi and this kind of futuristic kind of world of your just in general for entertainment is that kind of your, your vibe 
Big question. That's a great question. See, Nick Longo, what's up, man? How you doing? Nick, we need uh, puns and names. If you have one, shoot it over. Um, sci-fi. I love sci-fi. I think it's really cool. Um, this is definitely like more of just me liking what I'm seeing in terms of design trends that I'm seeing out in the graphic design world right now mm -hmm. and wanting to play it up. And I typically never get to play with trends because I always am trying to find something that works for the client and mm -hmm. it's working like to their goals and not just emulating what's happening as a quick design fashion. So mm -hmm. for me, like this is an opportunity for me to have some fun, play with it and kind of just push my own comfort zones. Like I don't really get to play with this style but like that often, so. Mm. No, that's an awesome thing. And I guess as well, like the idea of the passion projects, right? It's it's something that if you're freelance or you're full-time, you'll probably get so wrapped up in that kind of world of work that you don't sometimes get a chance to to work on projects for, for fun or to collaborate mm -hmm. with friends or the community. So these kind of projects, for me, I, dude, I, I feel like they're the ones that it allows you to almost de-stress a bit and just have fun with it and explore. Um, you know, there's no much rules to, to what you can and cannot do, um, which is quite fun at that early stage as well. Uh, so we've got Nick who just said to fill, fill me in in terms of uh, the names. So you've got an idea of what we're working with. Yeah, so essentially what's happening is we're making up like our own custom personal project. <laughs> big sticks, okay, thank you, Misha. <laughs> uh, we're making up our own brand. It's a tech company. It's generic. It can be whatever. Um, we just need a cool name that feels cool and can build some hype around it kind of feels like maybe like a a crypto nft blockchainy like what does that company actually do type question mm. that's what i'm looking for something ambiguous and big and cool i was Nick gonna is, go for like make it pop then this is a classic like you gotta make it pop or just call um, it pop <laughs> just make it wow <laughs> so okay so here's let me explain what i just did so i really liked this um typeface it's uh, PP new bit. It's by Pangram Pangram. Um, it's cool. It's a little bit too tall. I think it's a little bit too rectangular. Um, I love kind of geometric squarey things. So I think just by shrinking it down, I'm trying to see if I can like get it to match actual squares on it. Um, I mean, I think the typeface works really well on its own, but I want it to feel a little bit more wide. Um, so I'm just trying to get the typeface to kind of match mm. the exact dimensions and see if it's a one-to-one -one with squares in this typeface. It doesn't look like it. Uh, so we might make some additional squares for the X and then mm -hmm. we can make a pattern out of that. That could be really cool. And then start working with some like, probably pair it with a, a sans serif geometric typeface of some sort to like counterbalance it and mm. then start throwing in some collateral and some other of that dimension stuff as well. Awesome, man. I mean, you made a really good point there. Like, I love the idea of once you've got the the logo or that, that identity kind of, you know, that foundation set to kind of, you can kind of strip away parts of it to almost create a different thing. So when you mentioned obviously working with shapes or blocks, especially if it's geometric, you can kind of almost use them as whether it's icons or use them as, you know, a visual and, you know, language to kind of, describe what the brand's about um because already i'm almost thinking like you know that sort of tetrisy kind of like um old school like you know the eight bit kind of games mm -hmm. um that yeah. kind of style where they kind of come together different shapes to make one image um which would be cool i always think that's quite cool with brands when you get they can kind of strip away at their logo but it still keeps the essence of what they're about whether it's simplifying it or, or working in that space um so yeah i'm definitely liking like in the, I'd rock, I'd rock a bit of Bix and Vix on, my, on a t-shirt, I'd say, on a screen printed t-shirt, and I, that would be my, uh, that would be my weapon of choice. I love that. There's, there's, you know, the brand Vix, the, the cold rub, right? Yeah, I was thinking that the whole time. I keep, yeah. yeah, I can't get away from it right now. So now I'm just like. Mm. I but mean, I was literally different. using that a lot, but um, yeah, just because I was on well recently. So when you mentioned Vix, I was like, I'm not going to mention that I was really sick recently. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. Vix, Vix and me were best friends recently. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Sweet. All right. So I got those boxes. Okay. So now I'm going to just try to recreate this V. Uh, I think I just need room now. Cool. So again, for you, uh, for you lovely people, if you're, like you said, if you're streaming in on YouTube or Behance, you know, get those 
questions in the chat um, and I'll share them directly with Alex. Um, and like we said, any names, it seems as though we've got like uh, almost like a running theme. We've got bricks, bit, 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 nicks. <laughs> I kind of like that. I can't even say the word. We've got bixed with a T at the end of it. That's a tongue. That's a silent one. Um, yeah, it's definitely a running theme. Um, but <laughs> get them in there, actually. I feel I want to rock it up and actually mix it up with like a P or something. Yeah, there you go. Picks. <laughs> you never heard before. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I've done here is now I've got this uh, one kind of column of squares going. I'm going to group it. I copy pasted it in front. And now what I'm doing is just going to transform it and reflect it uh, across the vertical. And then I'm going to just drag it over and boom, bada bing, bada boom. Now we've got a V. I'm going to delete this second square here. Cool. Nice. So that's good. And then what I can do is just take this group over here that is already matching mm. and might. Hmm. Okay. So I've got an idea. I might just keep the eye tilted. Mm. <laughs> Nick's. I, I just saw that as well when I saw it. I was like, that's 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 pretty clever, actually, Nick. Nick. <laughs> Nick Longo with the brilliant uh, names. Brilliant. Um, didn't we do it? <laughs> We did a stream together where I was trying to name stuff after Nick, I think. Together where he was my host. It was great. Amazing. All right. Let's see here. So I can see why they... So I duplicate. I pressed Command F, uh, Command C, Command F uh, to duplicate and paste on front. And then I'm going to transform it, reflect again, go back the other way. So if I was to just do... Let me just move this up so you can see it. An X like this is not going to work because it looks like that. That's not, it looks like a a guy shrugging, but without a head. It's just kind of like, meh, no, no. <laughs> not good enough. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, space them out a little bit. And that's why they did the half steps on the X, which makes a lot more mm. sense. Sometimes mm. you don't know until, you know, you start playing with things. But I think if I... And just go through this struggle bus journey. I love Steve. Steve. Um, so Steve said Quantum Vix. That's all very Marvel like right now, isn't it? I like, I like that. Oh my God. Quantum Vix. It's almost love almost it. rolls off the tongue a little bit, but yeah, I love it. All right. So I'm doing. The, that was my thinking noises right there. I love that. It's always interesting, like when I do these hosting and seeing. Either you got a thinking face or, mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably what it is mainly as your thinking face, but in your case, you got a thinking sound. That's a new one, actually, I have, I have to say. That is a new one. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of a thinking fidgeter. Like I've got like, like a, I have a Rubik's Cube or some sort of block beside me just to like fiddle whilst I'm thinking, but um, smart thinking sound. Oh, no, that's yeah. not me like trying to be glass as me, like, yeah, being no, fiddly. You can't. <laughs> Can you solve it or you just play with it? Do you know what? That's really embarrassing. Says so live. I I've done like two or three sides, and the irony is every place I've been at for work, um, when I kind of you know moved on, they've always got me a Rubik's cube. That always <laughs> seemed to be the running theme. So I've got like four, five different sizes of Rubik's cubes, and each one has like one or two faces done. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm just like a classic design. He just has it there to look cool. But yeah, one day I will do it. Maybe live on camera. Who knows? But um, until well, that day, you gotta put it together. <laughs> Have you, you done one? Have you done one? Have you? No. You set the tone. <laughs> we we no. can say, yeah. Did it for no. the stream, actually. Yeah, it's pretty. No, I would, standard. I've tried. Yeah. And I have successfully um, exited out of that. that it is fun, though. Like, I feel like, I mean, even what we're doing now with the X, my brain is kind of thinking in that kind of cube like, cuboid sort of shape. Um, yeah, for me, I kind of just get lost. I don't actually do it to complete it, it's just more of a stress relief. Yeah. That was a stress ball. Um, sure. Yeah. If but anyone I like chat has a better suggestion for what I'm doing right now, because the thinking noises didn't help. So I might have to just copy what they did with the, the X. The V and the X have the same footprint. Mm. So let's just see. Yeah, the I, I see what you tried to do with the I, just so it kind of mirrors like the angle of like how the X and the V is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's Maybe almost like walking either. We'll see. Mm, I, yeah, I see why their one is just like a single straight. Um, or maybe it could be the dot. 
if that kind of like a slight you know the dot of the top of the eye if that's like a slight boxed mm. like slightly off maybe um so something like this you can even um the great thing about having a digital design tool like this is you can just <laughs> yeah. move things around and duplicate it and take up no space do you know it's quite embarrassing i've definitely like done drawings like for logos and like my brains think copy and paste on <laughs> pen and paper it's like you, you, why no just you're so used to just minority reports or start right i'm just moving yeah, yeah. with your hands um i think it might need a half step um you know one of the the biggest pain points that i've realized especially like after going back to the grocery store and not doing like grocery delivery and stuff mm. is I miss the feature for like command F to search for something in a, in a physical <laughs> grocery store. I, yeah. I get so <laughs> frustrated having to go aisle by aisle trying to find the thing that I want when, you know, when you're buying on online, you just, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. I want eggs. But then again, eggs, just a, you know? a little alternate for that. But then again, if you didn't have to do that, then you come, you might miss out on some cool things en route to what you need to find, right? I don't know. I'm just putting it out there now. I well, feel that's, like, imagine that's like, definitely yeah. why they do it, right? Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. You have to go for a wave of like nappies before you get like your, you know, utterly butterly or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> so random I said that one. Um, yeah, we've got Marcos who said uh, licks. So L I L licks nicks. Oh, you guys are testing me out today with the tongue wording. Um, yeah, <laughs> keep those coming in, definitely. Oh, even a, not even as a name, even a suggestion for for Alex as well. Whilst he's there, if you see something in there, you think, oh, that could work well. Um, I mean, we're on this kind of topic, this kind of theme of the geometric, um, you know, cube-like, rotating, reflecting. Um, mm -hmm. Any ideas you guys might have? Definitely get those. Get those in the chat. Um, but Nick, buddy, I want to. I'm quite curious. Like with your, whilst you're doing that, like your background, dude. Like, did you? Because you're freelance, right? Am I right in saying you're? Uh, are you freelance or you do you work for? You're talking about Nick. Time? No, Nick yourself. Waco? Oh, sorry, me. you. Yeah, oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> sorry, I thought you were talking to Nick. No, like, no, it's yeah, you. Nick, what's you up to, Nick? Nick is busy, man. What's your life, Nick? What's What's going on? <laughs> What's in next world? Um, now you, buddy. What, what's your background? Yeah, so Are I'm you... I'm running a design firm called Lazarus. Um, we're doing that full time right now. Cool. It's delightful. I think my boy Ethan's probably watching right now. We got yeah, it's cool. <laughs> you know, just trying to hang out on Adobe Live as much as possible. And just make cool work. It's the dream. I love that. I love that. Hey, your stuff is awesome dude i definitely um i've been checking off streams before but like it's very very strong in terms of like design and everything about it. it's pretty awesome man <laughs> really, really cool thanks man i i <laughs> i'm gonna try to keep that reputation going as i <laughs> play with a bunch of squares right now <laughs> it's like every minute that goes by it's like oh actually <laughs> no, I'm it's, it's exactly. i actually like that actually that that looks pretty you know my main my mind's already thinking in like in like color with like different tints as you kind of go mm -hmm. up but it, it, maybe that could work i know you kind of work in black and white first and then you you work your way in color but mm, that's interesting though. does that feel too heavy or is that fine it's a little it's a little heavy on the inside right a little bit on the x yeah it's almost like if if the x was like a main selling point for what that brand is then it's like you can get away with it because the x is really it's dominant isn't it in that middle mm -hmm. um might just see if we can just do like a yeah. uh what i'm gonna do here to try to counterbalance that is we're gonna just fake it uh so we're gonna do uh grab our object and then press s and then press enter that's gonna bring up the scale tool and then i'm gonna just do a uniform change down to 50 percent uh since we're doing half measures already on kind of where the alignment is so every square is like a half measure uh, off uh i'm just gonna Grab this and just bring it into the middle of this project. And just group it all together real quick. Press F and then align to uh, center. Yeah, go away, awesome. Zoom tool. I We've love got, going um, to the top of my yeah. screen and, and the Zoom tools being like, "Did you wanna? Did you want to talk right now?" <laughs> do you remember that? That reminded me of. Um, do you remember like the old school like words like "Did you mean with the paper clip?" Oh, it's yeah, like, Clippy. Ding, 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 yeah, ding. Say, did you did you mean this? It's like um, yeah. Can you imagine they just they still have that? No, surely no, not. They That's old school, isn't it? 
Yeah. Of fame. That was in school. I was in school days when that came out. Um, yeah. For anyone who's even before that period is like, yeah, what is he talking about? I think um, we're good. I think we're, we're close. That looks strong. That looks good. Right, that feels pretty good. Chat, let us know what you think. Let's see what we do with the Krami, audience, but... He said Vox for Void or Misha Vic, <laughs> Vix Vox. Vox Vic, is that's a cool lot. one. Vox, Vox. That's see. strong. Yeah. The O could be interesting actually how that could work. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm. Now you got us thinking, chat. I love it. Love when you nice when you bring it like that. All right, let's. Okay, I feel good about the X now. Only took me 30 minutes to make an X. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no judgment in the Adobe Hemisphere world. It's all <laughs> good. We got Shauna who said, um, ah, oh, Clippy was awesome. What would be the Adobe equivalent of Clippy? I'm going to be cheesy and say Adobe Live because you can ask. <laughs> it's not cheesy. You guess maybe it is a bit, but um, I feel like there's anything you kind of want to know or tutorials. You could probably get away with watching something on here and finding out, right? Um, yeah. Well, what other shape could you even use as a clip? I mean, paper clip makes sense because it brings things together like documents, but a bulldog clip hasn't got the same <laughs> feel to it, does it? I think that whatever we do, it needs to have Comic Papyrus as his the the mascots like typing. Nice. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Ah, that's a good shout, Steve. So yeah, Vox is a Latin word for voice. Oh. Okay, there we go. Going start going start going into the whole like branding philosophy now of um I love of it. Vix Vox or Vix. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yes, Steve. Adobe Express equals Clippy. There you go, smiley face. I like your style. Um and actually on that topic it's quite nice to mention it's but half um eight thirty now. Oh eight thirty my time. It's eight thirty so if it's everyone else's time. Eight thirty my time, so half an hour has gone into the stream. So if you just uh joined us. Um, a massive welcome, first of all. And today we have the awesome creative director, Alex Lazarus, um, and he is sharing us one of his personal projects where he's drawing inspiration from a tech, sci-fi um, and digital world to create a branding um, of his choice. So welcome, you've just joined. Um, and right now you can see him working on some cool branding on Illustrator. So uh, welcome along if you've just joined. That feel, now that feels too heavy, right? Mm. All right, let's, we can make lots of those. All right, so what I've done is essentially just duplicated and grouped them all. Now I'm gonna ungroup them by Command Shift G. Let's just go one by one and ungroup them all. All right, cool. So now I can start messing with stuff. I can either try to go one at a time and go like that. Maybe I need to just, so that kind of kills mm. it. I see what you're trying to. It's almost like make it go from a extra bowl to a regular. And then, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we have the option because mm. these are all half steps here as well. Mm. Um, so Actually, my brain just thought. You know, when you had that X where it was quite chunky before. I think I don't know if there's like an extra cube in the middle. But like my brain's thinking because it's almost like you've got the O quite chunky. Yeah, it's almost like creating as the different shapes you've created. You can start pulling them apart to create. Maybe something else in there because um yeah maybe i don't know in my brain it sounded like a good idea I'm no sure. that's, that's, <laughs> you know that's when you think like, about it, it's like uh <laughs> literally the ongoing challenge that's what i love about adobe streams it's like yeah you get to watch people go through the same process that you go through as a designer mm. and there's no judgment it's just pure like I don't know. I feel like there's so much imposter syndrome in the graphic design world that Definitely. watching people who have portfolios that you admire mm. struggle with the same decisions you make on a daily basis is just kind of completes the human experience a little bit more. It's very philosophical, mm. but it's like you don't feel as alone when you see. No, I totally, totally get that. I, it's funny, actually, because without going to a piece, what you just said there about that imposter syndrome, it's interesting because I always think when you go to, you know, say talks or, you know, when you go to maybe see your favorite designer, I always, I'm always quite interested in, say, the things that went wrong rather than mm. the polished work. Because one, like you said, it makes them just feel more human and more relatable. But two, 
it's totally healthy, right? To just have a bit of that creative block and just the unknown. Um, I guess the, the, the downside of social media, which I love social media, but I'm not a, a, an ogre, but I guess it's everything seems so shiny right on social that it just looks as though there's no there's no need for any failure because it's all our shiny things. But um, especially if you're just starting out, you know, if you're a grad or, you know, you're a junior designer, it's um, imposter syndrome and, and even even older, actually senior as well, right up to us. I guess the older you get, you're probably better at hiding it, maybe. <laughs> I, don't know if, is that a, I don't know if that's a true, true reflection, but perhaps. I don't know. I don't know. I think possibly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all fake it till you make it, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, L, sorry, L, L Akrami, if I said it correctly, um, he said, we can pull the middle cube to the left and right to make more space like pixels. Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, um, I think that's kind of what you've done, actually. Kind of, but I think I'm, I'm, good. I'm cooking it somewhere. Let's see here. This is, this is a fun challenge. I haven't made a pixel thing or a gridded type in a while, so. No, it's looking cool, man. I like that. Again, it's just one of those ones you have to just play around a bit, right? You just keep mm -hmm. duplicating, rotating, play around. Um, Look how much time that would have yeah. saved if I just took the X. <laughs> 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 Classic design to just take the long way around. That's it, man. The scenic route. <laughs> yeah. I love that my, my whole that period cool. at the beginning was... Yeah, you could buy these PNGs, but we have to show you how to make it. And take four <laughs> times this long. We're basking in the company, so we, we don't mind. We don't mind in the um, the, the long way round. We're all yeah, good for exactly. it. <laughs> That's nice, though. I like the the feeling of the spaces versus the mm. eye kind of just breaks the flow until it's kind of diagonal. That looks um, cool. That box, I like that. Yeah. So let's let's just figure out some of the spacing real quick mm. across these letters even as well that one as well it's like the way the v the you know the, on the right hand side of it um and then the x kind of coming in it kind of hugs the o in a way so you've, you've kind of mm -hmm. got a nice equal spacing in between um yeah i think that works really well do we want it smaller huh and again, I mean, it'd be great to know if anyone in the chat, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've worked on any, say, even futuristic projects or anything that kind of works on, you know, whether it's using shapes, tessellating, rotating, um, you know, any stories you guys have got, again, it'd be great to know, you know, creative block, how did you kind of find your way out of it? Um, you know, we're kind of creating as we go along. There is no literally definitive destination, which is the beauty of it. Um, but yeah, how do you guys kind of find your your way? If you've got any stories, please do share. We would love to love to hear about it. Absolutely. I think chat's more interesting than I am. So <laughs> <laughs> I always love when chat helps out. Do you, uh, know, do you ever like, even just something to say, just very quickly, like it's weird. Like even when I'm not like hosting and say I'm designing, I usually have Adobe Live on in the background. And that's not me trying to generally plug. That's a, maybe because it's quite the time difference as well with the UK and the US. So at 10 at night, you know, most people are, you know, shutting off shop. But um, if I'm still working, it's quite nice to sort of see, you know, Adobe Live. Um, and like other creatives just have a chat and talk. Someone's, someone's in the background. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice to kind of lie about. Sorry, dude, I interrupted you before. You're gonna... No, no, you're good. Oh, I, yeah. I wasn't saying anything except for how cool chat is. <laughs> awesome. Um, so now we're like at this like weird, <laughs> here. This weird bit where the baseline, let's grab our ruler. So by pressing command or control R, you can pull out your ruler and you can set nice. guides. So right now I've got the kind of top guides, everything's working there. My O is below the guide. But if I want, so maybe I need to do just an S and uh, do the uniform scale down like we did earlier. Mm. I'm gonna use uh, like this pink to help me with my guide there. I love that when you said this pink. I love what I was making. Is that the technical? Yeah, no, I I do the same thing every. It's just like yeah, you could use rules, but sometimes by eye, it's just a bit of like a, a nice bright color, and that kind of distinguishes perfectly <laughs> the, size, yeah, yeah. the spacing you need. So this is, I mean, typically when I'm doing like a, a logo and stuff for clients, then I'll do um, mm. like I'll, I'll figure out the guides and make sure that everything sure. is correctly laid out. So I love when you can use spacing and make it uniform. So like now 
Mm. I'll take off the guide. So feels decent. I don't know. Maybe it's a mess. This is one of those things you do when you're a graphic designer, you just second guess everything. I think it's decent <laughs> enough. I think. Well, <laughs> let me just move this over. Feels digging dig in the box. I mean, by cool. so so of emojis, guys, in the chat. What are you guys? What <laughs> vibes do you get by emojis? Um, I can and play nice. Do you get when you see when you feel Vox when you see Vox? <laughs> yeah, what what vibes are you getting? Getting like a, like a mobile provider, like loads of uh, phone sync phone uh, emojis now pop up. <laughs> oh, why is that? There we go. There. Um, that. All right. Uh, uh, just like overthink everything. Let's go. Oh, not sure. In general, I mean, where did you? I mean, for this project, you mentioned obviously, you know, you're you're kind of into this, you know, your your enjoyment entertainment is kind of like sci-fi, and that's kind of like your your vibe. Um, is that where you got inspiration from? Did you read anything? Did you watch anything recently where you thought, ah, this would be cool, you know, to to kind of share the guys on Adobe Live? Like, where do you for this project in particular? Um, or where yeah. in general, where do you kind of find inspiration from, dude? For for this project specifically, mm. I it was just mostly just paying attention to like what's happening in the design, graphic design world. Sure. saying some stuff that was just like ah oh, that's so cool like i love what they're doing here i think over the last couple of years i feel like a lot of like 90s chrome stuff has been coming back up like i feel like there's like that resurgence of like 90s graphic tees and mm. like hot topic from the 90s type stuff that's kind of coming back but then now people are taking it and like making it feel a little bit more elegant and so yeah. all that stuff was coming up on my behance so i was like oh this is really hot but I can't do that for a client. Like a lot of my clients are like small to like extra large businesses. Mm. It's not going to work for like a medium to extra large. And sure. the small ones want something typically a little bit more elegant. Mm. Um, so it was mostly just trying to like scratch a creative itch that I just saw and I was like, I love this. So nice. I love that. And you come to the best place to scratch that itch, dude, on Adobe yeah. Live. So, Honestly, boom. like Adobe Live has been so good for my, <clears throat> like, I've gotten to do some really fun personal projects and I just love getting to come hang out with chat, lot, you know, try something new and mm. see if it works. Well, I like as well. It's funny because, I mean, the more you do these and, the, uh, you know, Adobe Lives and even the more that you guys join, you start to recognize familiar faces in the chat. Oh, familiar faces, <laughs> familiar names. And you know what I mean? But um, but it's quite cool because, again, it, it feels that's the whole community vibe, right? And the essence and the beauty as well is that, you know, where you're based in L.A., right? And I'm in London. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, you know, we hopefully one day we can meet in person, but we haven't met. But we've connected via live and same for you guys in the chat when you're you're, you're talking, you're connecting. You know, it is in itself as a community, so it, it's um it's a cool thing to kind of you know get involved with. And if you see if you're new to this, you know, definitely kind of watch more and more, um because even after we're done, there's more and more streams to watch, um and even replays you can catch up on, um so definitely watch and obviously uh and get involved, get interact. That's why we, that's why we love you guys to be here. So um definitely uh take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah, this is true. And I will be there probably in October. So we'll come grab a pint. Ah, uh, boo. <laughs> I love it. You said that in a British accent, a little British twang there. Little, little like, a pint, pint. mate. <laughs> what, you, uh, what you lovely people in the chat don't know is before we came live on, um, uh, Alex was testing out his, his very, very great uh, British accents on me. So, <laughs> pot of tea and uh, all of that came out. But it's all good. <laughs> I, I do love that. tea, actually. <laughs> Rumble, rumble now. <laughs> My visa is gonna get declined. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, I'm loving the, the emojis as well in the chat. <clears throat> We've got Christine who said um, she's got like cool robot vibes. She's got like a robot emoji of like sunglasses. Oh, like sick. Wally, Wally, is it Wally with the E with like a badass? Mm -hmm. And you've got Nicole who's the got, original like, Dolly as well. <laughs> the original. Not Chucky. That's another thing. Um, you got Nicole, who's got like a sort of planet and like space invader, and I can't see what the other one is. Like a town. My eyes getting old. Um, it's giving me space cyber city. Ah, oh, yes, space city. Space cyber city vibes. I like that. I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Box the nightclub. There we go. That's the wrong thing that we're thinking of. But still is there a box nightclub? I, I, I just made that. Do you know what? Probably everyone goes on Google now and types in Vox <laughs> nightclub yeah. to see. Influx. I have no idea, but you feel like it could easily be like a downtown, you know, Matrix-like kind of club. Everything's green, neon. 
Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> Whoa, what is this? What's happening here? What did he? <laughs> I, I just, it just a glitch, me. glitch in the matrix. Yeah, it's all. Oh. Oh. That was oh. close. I that was almost like on the cliff, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's one of those dialogue boxes wow. that you're like, oh yeah, I can just cancel yeah. whatever, and then pretty soon you're back to making squares again for another thirty minutes. Um, let's go. That's to... a, just on, on that topic. That's almost like a, anyone knows Nika, one of our other Adobe hosts. There's always a running joke about knowing she's always down for saving, and we always try and plug that. Because um, even the greatest of minds will forget to press save sometimes. So um, save those files, ladies and yes. gentlemen. Always save those files. <laughs> All right. So what I'm trying to do here is make some patterns. We've got some really fun tile patterns happening. Uh, I kind of want to make a soccer jersey now. Like I've got. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. yeah, you're Ar you're an Arsenal fan. Right, yeah. Me... There we go. You set the tone early on. Yeah. Let me I, see I if am, I can uh... find a jersey. And for our, for our European friends, that's uh, that's football, isn't it? So soccer, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. No one says potato. Um, yes, soccer. I, I am a, I am a soccer football fan, definitely. Um, and I when I saw this, I actually thought of like the old school like games that kind of came out on like the original PlayStation. Actually, mm -hmm. even before that. Um, Have you? Yeah. Let me see if I can find this. Sorry, I'm like searching my computer frantically to see if I have a soccer jersey mock-up. Oh, tonight. we've we've started a trend. I knew we should have mentioned the Arsenal word. We've got Anthony. He said Man United are better, but let's not go into that realm. Um, <laughs> smile away, boys. Smile away. <laughs> Let me see. No, everyone's welcome. Get my download real quick. Okay, because I think this. Have you seen the Nigeria jersey that Nike did? Oh, like it's all, yes. Ago? That is a good shout. The oh, green and what? I see that actually. The pattern you're doing. That's. You know what? That would be a cool thing to brand, like a, a football kit. Oh yeah, in, in that I think that is one of those like dream clients to to do that. Um, For those of y'all yeah. not familiar with it, it's yes. this jersey that Nike made. Uh, you can't buy them; they sold out immediately. Mm. Uh, but it's so cool. It was one of the first that they started really like bringing the lifestyle into like design. Mm. It's just, it's such a cool kit. It's amazing. It was awesome though, because like like you mentioned, the the light they just it's more than just the patterns and the shapes. They yeah. they really went into the culture and the kind of um, you know material that you might associate with the continent and all these elements which actually made that kit. It was it was because I I'm gonna geek out way too much, but I saw a thing about when it was the um I think it was the, the men's Euros a few years back, mm -hmm. um, and it even though you though you might not even support that particular nation, people bought the shirts or the jersey just because of cool design, which for me, that's awesome because regardless of what nation, you can appreciate good design, right? Um, yeah. So that was that was cool too. Really, really cool. Why is this not working? Wow. <laughs> We've got um, Izzy, who's um, <clears throat> also an Adobe Live host, who said, oh, I remember when I forgot to save live. So Izzy was <laughs> another um, host who we have, we have, and also a designer previously, and we, we did ours um, a few months back, maybe even a, a year ago. And you've got to press save, but it's yes. all good. It's all good. We came back, we revived it. It's all good. We did revive it. How was that um, redemption art? <laughs> it was even sweeter the second yeah. time around. So <laughs> it was even sweeter. All right, I'm downloading my mock-up. I've got it. Awesome. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna make another pattern real quick. I think that I'm, if anybody's watched my streams before, I'm a huge sucker for like repeating patterns, I think. There's such a great way of bringing your brand to life. Mm. Sometimes that can be really, really heavy. Um, so let's, let's just show you what we've got so far. Um, we've got X's, we've got O's, we got nice V's. We can also add more spacing in. But like, man, these are cool. Like, these are yeah. pretty fun. My, I mean, don't get me wrong. My eyes are they are warped into your screen. And I may even just I may even just headbutt the screen directly because it's awesome. But it's just like I, I do love it because I'm a sucker for those kind of like those patterns where you're just almost you know when you're like of course it's cool where you it's that machine where you look through and it twists and it changes the colors and the shapes. Mm -hmm. The kaleidoscope. Oh, that's the name. Yeah, I see that now. Um, yeah, kaleidoscopes are awesome. I was also thinking if I like added some crazy colors with it, it could be a um, one of those like books that you have to like look really closely into and. <laughs> Yes. You're all crazy. I love that. All right. So 
Sure. All right. So color palette wise, I'm thinking the hot tech yellow neon color that everybody's doing right now. I don't know if you're familiar. It's so trendy. It's nice. There. It's going to be like kind of like that, like bright. Ah, uh, yeah, I got synthetic you. Synthetic green, mm. something like that. Could probably even use a little bit more yellow if we really wanted. Hi, this. All right. Who knew that we were going to be making a, a futuristic soccer team? <laughs> this is the beauty of Adobe Life. You just do it live. Yeah. Do you know what? Just very quick, and this is me not even geeking out. There's actually a thing called galactic football. And it's actually like, it's a mixture between the Matrix and football. Like, but they touch on futuristic. So this whole, in fact, this is actually, it's still relevant. So I'm not going to go two off, please. But it does touch on um, using kind of like futuristic shapes and graphics. Um, and then you kick the ball and the ball kind of disperse into pixels. And there we go. That's my end of my geek moment. But um, it's an awesome sweet. show if you're into if you're into <laughs> football and animation. I think I might just make it a little bit more green. Sorry, not to in your rant. Um, no, no, no. It was it was weird. Um, we've got. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying this right. Yeah, it was because even uh, you know when you're talking, he's like, why am I mentioning galactic football? But I'm gonna say it with my chest chest out because I love it. Yeah. Um, we've got. Uh, you, uh, Uriel, I hope I said it correctly, who said, um, I'm a professional magician and I'm a huge fan of optical illusion. That's an awesome job. Oh That's amazing. Um, wow. Being in LA, <laughs> there's uh, the Magic Castle, Magic Kingdom. Maybe you're all those. I know that was, what is that? It's <laughs> For us London a, folks, educate us. It's, it's a ma magician's only like um, magic venue. So you can only oh. go if you are a student of magic or a student of theirs, oh. or if you're a professional magician, or a, like brought specifically with the magician. That is so, awesome. Okay. It's, I think it's called the Magic Castle or the Magic Kingdom. Um, Not yeah, Magic Circle, is it? I've heard of. I think I've heard of that before. I mean, it's like South Park as a reference, but that sounds um that's awesome. That is an awesome job role. Um, and thank you for joining the live. I mean, that's that's that just goes to say, it doesn't matter if you're in a creative space or not. You can just appreciate cool work when it's when it's being shown i would so, say uh, that um yeah. magicians are so incredibly creative that's actually a very good point yeah 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 that's a very very good point yeah, i mean they they're like essentially just graphic designers they're always trying to make people look <laughs> where they want to look. yes i love that my business kind of be like kieran lewis wizard extraordinaire Jules, that's like magician just like <laughs> that'll be sweet Ah, uh, yeah. So you are said Magic Castle is a members only for magicians. That's the one, Magic Castle. Magic Castle. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you That's, very much. If you uh, if you're in LA and you you know <laughs> people, let me know. Uh, hit me up. Nice little plug. <laughs> All right. This I okay. This I feel like now I'm just like copying the Nigeria jersey. Am I <laughs> kind of down? I think. News as your inspiration. That's all good. Just <laughs> very heavily stolen. <laughs> Inspired by, by the entirety. Uh, let's do a color overlay and change it up to like. So I'm going to put it out there to the chat. Actually. It could be quite a bold question, but is there any particular kit for any maybe soccer fans or even not sort of soccer fans, but are there any kits that you've seen that you appreciate? Um, in terms of clothing that you may, if you're into sport, or even just sort of, you know, kits, branded materials that you've seen on different clothing or fashion labels, um, yeah. you know, let us know. It doesn't have to be football, just put it out there, or soccer. Um, anything you've seen recently, that would be cool to know what you're kind of, uh, what you're yeah, thinking what, in terms what's of... What's your vibe, habits. chat? What's your vibe? What is your vibe? Let us know, please. Yeah, honestly, it's... Soccer kits are so hard, man. Like... You don't want to like step on people's toes, you know? Yeah. Or at least I I don't. Maybe some people do. There's uh, a, um, I was gonna say there's a there's a oh, I forgot, oh Dick, Simon Dixon he's he's a freelance graphic designer in the studio and he recently rebranded. Um, I think it was Everton is a football club in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they they freelancer. He owns a huge studio. 
Did I? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. He's like a back alley designer. Yeah. That's the guy, Dixon. He's like, he's like us, you know? We go way back. We go way back, just uh, chilling out, kicking the curb. Um, yeah, his, his stuff was cool. Because again, like, if you know about Everton and the brand, like, they have that, I don't know if it's the famous, it's a castle, right? Or some sort of architectural yeah, thing. Door, but, um, right? Or whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah, and they've kind of kept essence and that true design. If you haven't seen it, definitely go on um, Dixon Studio. Um, yeah, not just, not just one bloke, not just not just one lad. That's never gonna let me go now, is it? Just one no. lad in a, in, a, in a basement. You're never getting hired. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's all good. I can appreciate it from afar. Um, yeah, but definitely check it out because I, I I saw it. I was like, I'm not an Everton fan, but I I can appreciate that. And actually, on that topic, lastly, thing about football, Arsenal's kit is awesome. Just saying, they have a very very cool kit. Yeah, and I'm being biased. Bias. No, you say that, but actually, there's been. I don't know why they do this, but they do like a vote every season of like the best kits and Arsenal tend to be number one. I mean, who's counting, right? It's like seven years in a row, but who, who is counting? Um, <laughs> so definitely check that out after the stream, of course, not not during the stream. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. The, I mean, AC Milan just went through a rebrand. Juventus went through one a couple years ago. Like it's, it, it's pretty it's a big deal now. <laughs> but do you like that? That I sound British now? You, yeah, I love that. I yeah. set the tone early on. Set the tone early on. Um, we've got Steve. Who, hang on, Kieran. Kieran would know this guy's name. There's a famous UK magician who does street magic. Ah, uh, okay. I'm just going to go out there. Is he still around? I don't know. I'm going to say no. Dynamo. I bet it's Dynamo. Possibly Dynamo. He's cool. He's like down with the kids kind of magician. Have you heard of Dynamo? Do you know who that is? No. I he is awesome. Um... Yeah, definitely. I, I hope it's Dynamo. I, I mean, I don't know many <laughs> UK magicians, um, but I feel like it probably is him. Um, he's at the most modern, up to date. Um, no, that's a horrible thing to say, but just like more current, I guess, in terms of magicians in the UK, potentially. I hope that's what you're on about, Steve. Um, if not, have a Google, let me know. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, like I love the new kit from Barcelona uh, that Spotify did. That's just the lifestyle one. Uh, it's like, yes. uh, it's like the beige one. It's yeah. just like people are, they're doing such a good job of making kits like mm. exciting for people who are maybe not your traditional fan. Mm. Yeah, cause when you think about it, that's a, that's a good point. Like one thing to brand for, you know, your fan base, your clothing, but I guess if it's sport in particular, where it's it's forever growing, right? It's never like a set target audience because it, it changes with generation and whatnot. Trying to create a, a, a identity on a clothing for something that it changes every year, right? Every season they change the kit, so it's always having to be updated, but enough that it doesn't offend or not the right word offend, but like it still is a positive reaction with the crowd. Um, mm -hmm. That could be quite tricky um, as a brief. Actually, I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to do that as a as a job for sure um but it, yeah it can't be that easy i imagine i've uh um, recently declined to purchase a jersey because of their sponsorship logos <laughs> really yeah uh, I mean, uh, you say we're dying to know the name now i know you probably can't but it's just like no it, it was uh i mean i can say it with my whole chest i guess yes uh, so proud, mate. <laughs> there, there is a um the there's a Portland Thorns is a um, a women's soccer team in Portland, Oregon. Really strong team, awesome work. Their proximity to Nike, I think, has helped them a lot with their kit. Their kit has been amazing for like the last three years. I feel like um, I've had their jersey for every year, essentially the last three years. It's amazing. It's got roses. It's it's a Huh. rose thorns is pretty much their whole like petals and stuff like that it's amazing even the new uh, one's pretty sick it's got like a ribbing of just like thorns and it's just the stripes of thorns across nice pretty cool but they got a tiktok sponsorship recently <laughs> and the, the logos on the <laughs> sleeve and it's just so big it's like <laughs> it's like so uh, big it's like every time that the like you know your client oh, comes no. up to you and goes Hey, like we need to make the logo bigger. It's like that, but they're like, it's big, but it's silly big, right? Is it like yeah? Like, it's like a captain's armband big. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's so big. Oh, dude, 
I think it's your your passion for for TikTok, man. If you're gonna, I'm I'm so off that radar of TikTok. I mean, I'm not against it, but I I'm not in that space. Um, well, yeah, but, for context, yeah. their old brand sponsors was like Jimmy John or Jersey Mike's, which was like a, a sandwich place, okay, and like a healthcare company before. So it's like you know. Oh wow! Okay. Now it's, it's TikTok and it's very TikTok. big. <laughs> yeah. This is looking cool, by the way, dude. I'm I'm. Thanks, man. Just trying to. Like... It feels like it could be like a well, it's the badge on like almost like the emblem potentially on the. Uh, yeah, the we can kit, do that. maybe. Yeah, we could put like Getting a that kind of like sewed on patch. Yeah. I love that this stream has just become a soccer stream now. It's great. Yeah, no, I really I apologize for anyone's free. Oh, talking about football, really. Like we talk about every alpha in between. Um, you just caught us in that particular period. Um, but actually quite a nice time to actually mention now, because um, yeah, about an hour into the stream, which time has literally flown by Ooh. ridiculously. Um, but yeah, if you have just joined us, um, massive, massive welcome. If you've been here already, awesome. Um, and today we have uh, creative director Alex Lazarus, um, and he is designing his personal project, uh, which is taking inspiration from tech, sci fi, and digital worlds. Uh, and we're creating a brand right now using different shapes, geometric patterns, um, in Illustrator, and a bit of Photoshop. Um, so, a massive welcome if you've just joined us. Any um thoughts you want to put in the chat regarding what we're working on or we'll just know about alex what, what what is he into his vibe um you know does he support arsenal or not all these questions you can throw in the chat that was a little sun just like hitting them anything in the chat just throw it in there um and i would happily love to share it with um with with alex <clears throat> yeah do i support arsenal i support <laughs> they've oh, got no, a cannon on there it's pretty nice it is it's a yeah, strong motif gonna mix it up it's funny actually because there's always some sort of what's the one i'm looking for you got like you mentioned with the football team you mentioned before it's the fawns the cannon the foxes which is like wolves there's always some sort of um uh, animal or, or object that is i'm gonna say the word violent but it's it's what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> aggressive is the right word i don't know like you're not gonna get the ladybirds are you as like a brand maybe i don't know maybe there is actually i say that now can you imagine there's a ladybird soccer team out there um but yeah, I'd like to see maybe a, a less passive aggressive. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, what is what is Juventus as one? I mean, it's just a J logo now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they've they've um oh my football knowledge now. Yeah, they've they've changed it. Yeah, sometimes the typographic actually was quite nice when they mix it up. Um, mm -hmm. Typographic, yeah. Um, we've got a um, so now a little pivot for away from football. Um, we've got Isabel who's asked uh, Alex, "What is a successful design for you?" I mean, that's that's a big question, but what would you consider to be a successful design in your world? Uh, honestly, <laughs> it's such a cop out answer, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> sorry. Right. Um, for me, success looks like the client being thrilled by the process at the end of the day. Um, I've structured my contracts in a way that have removed my ego from it as much as possible. And I tried to make sure that the client is just really content with the end result. Um, because that gives me so much more, um, like roadmap down the line, like as a business owner, I want to make sure that my clients are happy. It's way easier for more, for me to um, get referrals than it is for me to always hunt for new business. So if I keep the clients happy, I'm typically going to get a referral. Um, and so what is it? Is a fish on the line is a fish in the hand is better than a fish in the pond or whatever, something like that. Um, mm. Those like that. That's kind of an ideology that I really want to can always have instilled. Mm. No, I think that's copper. I think that's a good. I think um, that totally works. I mean, that's. You, I think you mentioned as well that like, the idea of you know because they are they're you know they're a happy client, everything's going well. Um, it's for, for every freelance or all just business in general where you you know you can continue that relationship, right? It's it's you don't want to do a one off thing and then you know wham bam thank you ma'am kind of thing. It's 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 a continual thing and you can kind of keep that relation. And I I don't know if you found it too, Alex, but. With clients who you have, um, even of my own, that when you've worked with them several times, it's almost like there's a lot more 
I don't want to say freedom is the right word, but more of a trust element, perhaps on both sides, where you know they they, they can you can not run with it exactly, but they they do trust in that design process more so with what, especially when you're, in opposed to when you're just starting out with them, um, mm-hmm. you know they don't know what they're going to expect, but the more you do, um, and the more ideas you can kind of put to the table and, and obviously justify why you've done what you've done, um, they really kind of buy into that philosophy. I find, and um, for me, that that's the kind of kind of answer that question is from from my side and for me that's that's the million dollar thing where you can kind of keep that relationship strong you can come back um but also you can you you don't just become the yes man yes woman anymore you can kind of challenge and that's okay right to to challenge because you both want to get the best deliverable um possible so that's almost a sweet spot for me i'd say um with having a successful designer or even a client in general yeah i agree i think as you get up in your career like the more trust you can get from a client the more like you said ability to challenge them and think in new ways is is Mm. kind of everything that you want what you've worked so hard to get to so we value that great question is he um and in fact what's your i know you're obviously you work in the brand design sector as well so definitely get us um your thoughts and back to you in terms of that question and to everyone else in the chat as well what do you guys consider to be successful design um you've obviously heard mine alex thoughts you know we'd love to hear what what you guys think if you're in the freelance world and full-time world or just general you know you can appreciate good design i'm sure so um which is why you're here so you know, let us know in the chat what it is and um we can discuss it it'd be awesome yeah all right i'm just like futzing with this thing and i don't <laughs> even know what i'm doing anymore so <laughs> just let's, uh, all right okay all right ah. I like it. Do you know what? When my brain gets like that, it's almost like, because I like it, but I don't want to keep editing it. I just duplicate. And then I'm like, yeah, I keep my original. Um, that's cool. That's almost like XX, isn't it? Is it XX? The band? Is that, the, to it. is that the band? Yeah, no, what am I saying? There's a, I feel like, yeah, I know XX the band, but <clears throat> I've seen some sort of music album recently where it's got this kind of geometric um, feel to it. Almost, I don't know. I don't want to say religious, but it's obviously got a cross and like, does, two or it does have there, but... kind of a religious vibe to it. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's because I just got back from like Portugal. Now I'm like <laughs> converted. <laughs> <You see>? Yeah, <laughs> influence without even realizing. Yeah, <laughs> realizing <exactly>. it. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is just add a little background to it um, by just drawing. <laughs> We'll go ahead and flip it. Uh, so Izzy said, um, so like design of a strong concept, a design that exists with purpose. Boom, there we go. Um, yeah, chocolate teapot otherwise, isn't it? Um, very good shout. It's um, designed with purpose. And even design that can influence change, right? Potentially mm-hmm. as well, for, for especially if it's community-based or something for a good cause. Um, which I feel like even the same thing for like, protests and without getting too off piece but like the branding that they do in protests is certain styles and things that are there to influence um yeah i'm liking this by the way dude it's been yeah, yeah the goal is to have this done to a place that you would want to buy it or wear it <laughs> dude sell it in your shop and i'll be the first one to rock it around you I'll, I'll wear it around piccadilly circus i will um, get number 14 it <laughs> i love that Wrapped, gift wrapped it. Um, with the pattern, of course, as well. Oh, <laughs> on for sure. Tissue paper. Nice. <laughs> What's the uh, the transparency? Oh, that's what I'll do. All right, now I can see you're working between the Illustrator and, and Photoshop, which, um, I mean, every designer kind of does that. But it's, if again, if you're quite new to the programs, you'll probably realize that, you know, we're working between the two programs. But there's a lot, especially if you're just starting out, there's a lot that Adobe programs can kind of work in terms of how they in sync with one another. Um, you know, I tend to use Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop myself, but um, you know, in this case, we're working with Photoshop, Illustrator, but the two will very much work hand in hand. Um, and the more you watch tutorials or, or practice and bits and bobs, you'll start to realize how they actually do work. So um, if you're very new to this space and thinking, how is he drifting between Whoa. back and forth worlds? Um, there's definitely a method to the madness. <laughs> Keep on watching and keep on practicing as well if you get a chance to. I am shamelessly stealing this uh, idea from... <laughs> what, from the Nigeria kit? No, no, no. I oh, was going to make this a little bit more like designy now. Okay. All right. Nice. So 
I race cars. I used to race motorcycles and skateboards. Cool. I had my helmet painted by, um, I don't know if you watch Formula One or anything, but mm. there's an artist named Ornamental Conifer who um, paints helmets. He's painted Daniel Ricardo's helmet. Um, he painted mm. one of mine, uh, one of my race car helmets. He did an Adobe helmet a long time ago that was like sponsored logos and all this other stuff on it. Mm. That he used the transparency background and it was amazing. And I'm going to steal the idea of <laughs> using the transparency logo on this. You'll see how it all comes together in a second. Nice. Oh, dude, the crescendo you've built. I love that sort of um, <laughs> that build up towards us. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's awesome. <laughs> We've got RB who said it's the classic line Alex, make it pop in make it big pop. capital letters. Make it pop, make it wow. Do and for anyone that. thinking, why why are these jokes coming from? It's like I feel like a lot of designers will hear these words in the in their design lifetime, um, potentially. Maybe if you're more of a junior, you'll be, you'll be hearing it a lot, but it's um make it wow. I want to be wowed. It's like what does that even mean? Um, but hopefully you're being wowed right now, which is why you're here. So uh, massive, massive welcome. <laughs> yeah, so now I've just created my own little transparency background and I'm gonna just pull it in and then take it into Photoshop. And then let's just plop it underneath this color fill, smart object so we can edit it later. I think that's probably mm. a good one. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is actually take that color fill back up over it. And then, I don't know, what what sponsor do we have? Who's that sponsor today? I swear I made a Nick Longo uh, logo. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Actually, I saw that. Uh, he, he mentioned that you owe me a logo. I'm sure I saw that as a, as a chat, as a comment from Nick. I swear I made him. I, I, I mean, you got IOUs all oh. over the creative community of logos that you own people. <laughs> I will never be able to pay it all. In fact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I made it. I don't know what I named it. Oh, no. I did. We did a helmet design. Um, let me see. All right. Oh, Nick, if you're still here, help us out, Nick. If you, uh, I don't know if you've, if you drifted off into the realm, but if you are still here, throw us a lifeline. Okay, I found it. All right, I think oh, I found it. Let's we'll see if Lazarus racing. All right, this is what we did with Nick back in the day. Longo Rongo, see? Ah, oh, sweet. I, I love that. Oh, that is God. cool, man. Like my, <laughs> it's a oh, thing, all right. This happens. I'm not judging, dude. I'm laughing with you. Not at you. No. <laughs> all right, Longo cool. no Rongo. Let's grab this. We'll throw it on the jersey. Wicked. Smart object. And just see. Let's see. Like, yeah, that's that's awesome. Oh, you've definitely got to make this into an actual jersey, dude. You, you have to, man. <laughs> You have to. <clears throat> right, it's off center a little bit. Let's adjust it. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to um, I'm going to pull this layer actually up, and then I'm going to mask it uh, completely, and then I'm going to actually take my brush and just try to make it look like I'm erasing it off. Nice. Um, pencil. I love that. I feel like that was, where, how long ago was this? Was this um, Lego created? Oh, man. Are we going That's back like... in the uh, the archives? <laughs> like, probably before my time as a host. I don't know how far it back was. October 5th, 2021. <laughs> yeah, that was before, before my time. But I've seen. Is that on your Behance, Bunny Chance? Is that? No, not yet. I, I thought like I've that. seen That's that. Probably what he's talking about. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, we've. Got, <laughs> I love this. We've got a little bit of communication happening in the chat. That's that's what it's about, guys. You guys all talk as well amongst yourselves. We love to see it. Um. So Izzy Isabel's asked. Um. So a question to you, Alex. Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, Steve who answered it, uh, which is quite great. So Izzy's asked, Alex, what qualities as a creative? director should have so that was a question to you but then we had steve who answered it and said uh creative director should always buy by the staff drinks every friday 
There we go. You have one job. <laughs> one job. I mean, um, Steve's, Steve's not wrong. Yeah. You know, Steve, Steve Steve, knows what he's, he's talking not. about. He's not. He's not. And if you don't drink, then, you know, a mocktail or some sort of food. Yeah, it doesn't matter um, if it's alcoholic or not alcoholic. Yeah. It, you're getting a drink. It, it could be water. Yeah. It could be juice. Yeah. Or pastry Mondays. I'm down for a pastry Monday if that's a there thing. I mean, pastry I'll Monday. be a size of a whale afterwards. But um, so, yeah, so I'll answer your question, Izzy. Uh, Alex from Izzy, uh, what would you say special qualities or quality should a creative director have? Huh. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Um, Get the gift. <laughs> the to, to me, it's it's the most important thing is to be able to uplift around the people around you and make them or help them do the best work of their lives. Um, I think, you know, in a perfect world, that's what creative directors would be doing all the time. They would be able to manage the stakeholders, which is typically the client. Um, they would help those around them do the best work possible and grow and and get to the next level in their career and help see the blind spots that they might be experiencing or seeing. Um, yeah, I think it's mostly about support and nice. making sure that everybody feels like they're getting kind of taken care of and mm. and listened to and heard and. That. awesome i hope that uh ah he's, i'm taking notes so um there we go that's no that's that's great to hear and it's um i mean i'm not in that space whatsoever but like you said those kind of qualities i, I imagine a good creative director um or even just just you know senior level someone who is working with <clears throat> say younger people say or, or graduates it's just that nurturing ability right to it's one thing to have the talent as a designer but also the, the people skills and to be able to you know to the patience and to listen and all these qualities um like you said so um that's awesome yeah, by the way i'm liking that um i'm sorry, i'm liking that that brush that you've done with the, the pixels on the kit that's awesome dude yeah, it's kind of fun right yeah that's cool a little bit more yeah um i'm trying to figure out like what is our actual color palette is it just going to be black and white <laughs> and green like black white is that a green. thing chat let I me mean, know like if, yes. chat, if you have any ideas like i am all ears what colors are you guys vibing to that you think could work quite nice do you know what i'm even thinking on that um where you got your longo logo mm -hmm. the stripe that goes through is that like an orange or a red because i can or, see it's red right now but i could kill it i could do something else i could no, i love that i mean that that could be well, actually no i realized if that background's red then it would just completely merge in so that was that's a bad choice um but i like that color anyway i was just my brain was thinking ah something in there good today i could kill that stroke in the background and then mm, since i'm already yes. striking through it with the um yes i like that nick has left the building and he's getting his custom <laughs> jersey now you left at the best side <laughs> go wandering child so i can't tell if this this stroke is a little bit too big so i might just scale it i was gonna say yeah mike because it's almost that way where you kind of want to maybe make out what the letters are yeah. um but enough that keeps you in suspense right um it's just uh, yeah move on to a different layer i'm just thinking of like a design football team like the pixels or like i don't know <laughs> i don't know where that came i just thought the band pixies yeah the pixels <laughs> the pixels i thought the exact same thing oh uh, man <laughs> So uh, uncool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got like. That's a nice um, uh, comment from from Ural, who said, "So on that topic of what we were discussing about, <clears throat> excuse me, what makes a good creative director." Um, he said, uh, it's like any management leadership position. You make your employees feel valued, heard, and guide them to do better. Um, so yes, couldn't couldn't agree with you more on that front um yes oh that's a good shout marco marcus the invaders these these um that's it for, for in terms of names for like uh oh. <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> you looked at what do you mean the, inva <laughs> the invaders space invaders uh space invader was one of my favorite uh graffiti artists for a long time really yeah you know who space invader yeah. is i know of i know of nice that's a strong name as well that would work that would work quite well the invaders yeah, it's got the whole like the pixel. It's like a you can just take a space invaders icon and made it as like graffiti mark. 
Oh, I'm sure it's the pretty nut. Oh. Dotted around. Uh, what are you feeling? I don't know. Do you, it's weird. Do you think, like, would it be weird if does, when you have a shirt, does it kind of bleed into the shorts? Like, could that oh, like, do that. Weird? Do the kit? Yeah. The bottom? I was wondering if the sleeve should have the. Maybe, actually. I think on kits, do they yeah. kind of continue? Let's see here. Let's do. um. All right, let's let's see. Let's see. <laughs> I'm liking your star RB in the chat. So Sp Space Invaders, the everlasting game. Um, yes, very, very, very true. Um, <laughs> got like a for anyone born like was it 90s, 80s maybe? A oh, no, nostalgia now trip <laughs> coming in in yeah. full bloom. <laughs> Same here or place. We'll go here. Nice. And then I can take the and one twenty. All right, let's do it. It's it's amazing how fast uh, time flies when you're having fun. I know, dude. It's absolutely. I knew hosting you as well. It would it would be like this. I'm so. That's what I was saying. And I generally mean it. I was really excited to to be hosting you because I've seen your previous streams and I knew it would be a vibe. Um, so. doing it. I don't know how much football we'll be talking about though and um, definitely proved me right it was a lot but it, <laughs> in good terms hopefully you guys vibed that to that too which was great um, <laughs> yeah no it's been a blast and we've got um, a question from Karthik um, and <clears throat> excuse me let me know if it obviously crosses that boundary of, of slightly personal and you don't have to answer it um, he's asked how old are we just out of curious curiosity um, <laughs> does, that, does that determine <laughs> how good we are Is I don't know um, I'm 31 years old. If that if that adds to anything, um, there we go. Age nothing but a number. Don't have to answer it. <laughs> Made it weird now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna answer that. No, <laughs> I I tip I like. Yeah. No, okay. The reason why is because I typically have to manage people that are much, 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 much older than me, mm. and ageism shouldn't happen. But it definitely can. And so Definitely. I just prefer to keep those cards a little bit closer. I think when you're in a corporate environment, especially or other things mm. like, I don't know, nobody needs to know, you know, nobody needs to know. Very good show. Very good show. And it's funny because on that topic of like age, but even going into the space of one thing I've always found a bit frustrating is the, you know, junior level, midway, senior. And I always find, does that sometimes have to be based on age, but actually if you're already, I, I know many, many designers who maybe just came out of uni, but actually what they're performing is actually at senior level. You know, it's age is in our space, um, maybe other job roles as well, but especially in our space, it really doesn't matter about that. For me, it's the, it's the, it's the skill that you have, um, you know, and the ability you have and age. Yeah, okay, you might have a bit more experience because a bit more time, but people learn in different ways. People learn quicker, slower, that's regardless. Um, but yeah, if you ask and out of curiosity, there we go. If you want to know, Karthik. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I totally get that. Like, I I have hired very old people and, and roles that were, you know, based off their age, they probably should be a lot higher, but their skill set wasn't mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And vice versa, it's, it's really your skill set at the end of the day is what gets you the job and your performance in that role is what gets you promoted. So definitely it's not a competition and a lot of people think that it's like a race and you'll be fine most definitely yeah chris says i'm trying to get into junior mm, position but not a typical junior that's age that's interesting yeah. yeah it's i mean honestly like people reset their careers people mm. pivot like you're allowed to do these things so don't don't get mm. fixated on numbers and stuff just focus on your craft and your skill set and you're gonna be in a really good position i met sure. people at mentoring events who were coming from the banking industry yeah. and they're like i don't know if i'm good enough and i was blown away by their work and they were just now swapping and i was just like you're incredible this is absolutely your passion and you're calling do this please and you'll be like in a really good spot i love that i am um, it reminds me actually even when i was at uni because i think that's 
for anyone who's, who's been to uni um, may, may echo this too, but you find that you're a mixture of all walks of life and age is just maybe when you're in school and I've done the, the school system in the US with high school, but in say secondary school where, you know, you're around that sort of teenage age, obviously you're all the same age, but as you go into college and uni, you're surrounded by all walks of life and all different types of people and ages. So for me, that's like the best example to, to kind of, get familiar around working with people of different ages and skill sets and also people bring different things to the table right it's 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 generational so you're gonna have a different mindset to someone else you know potentially you know different age or culture not just age it could be culture it could be you know background as well um and that's the beauty of it you've got to celebrate it and, and be respectful um and just learn from it too right there's always something anyone can bring to the table so um hopefully chris we've obviously what you asked about getting into a junior position um you know these kind of comments and advice kind of helps you um and definitely keep us posting how you come along you know it'd be great to kind of know how you're how you're getting on because it'd be uh cool to know what what and in fact what actual junior position you're looking into is it like graphic design is it photography you know let us know we're quite curious to know um what space you're operating in yeah and if you need a portfolio review shoot me a note on behance or email um happy to do a portfolio review but um also, bear with me if I don't get back to you immediately. It's not because I don't like you. It's because <laughs> I'm busy. Um, feel free to ping me and bother me if I don't get back to you on time. Nice. Just send Alex loads of emojis, one email after the other. and <laughs> Don't do that. That'll be the that horrible <laughs> thing. But Kieran told me I can do No, 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 don't, don't. I, re uh, I immediately retract my statement. I'm just going to start forwarding you all my emails. Like that. <laughs> Cheers, dude. I opened the floodgates to that, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, okay, cool. Graphic design. So you're in a good place then, Chris. Hopefully, you know, what you're seeing now. And, you know, this is a pageant project to run, don't forget. So even if, and again, on that topic of, of being a junior and just starting out, you know, it's all good, obviously, trying to find a job in your role. But actually, whilst you're looking and say, you know, it might take a bit longer than expected, you know, you can do these little side projects. You can do these passion things and, you know, keep your creativity afloat like what we're doing right now. So um, hopefully these kind of, you know, tutorials, um, gives you some inspiration to kind of doing your own thing whilst you're waiting to actually secure that that junior position. Um, so good luck, dude, on your journeys. Yeah, the passion projects are such a great way for you to get the work that you want to do. Um, honestly, the best recommendation I can do is say, like, try to find the kind of work that you want to do and just put that work in your portfolio constantly mm. and go apply places that can give you that work. Otherwise, you might be applying for things that you're not showing in your book and you're gonna mm. have a harder time getting into. It's funny you say that. I um, just Rick, just before we kind of wrap on that part is um, even when I've you know looked at portfolios or, or for job interviews, I always find that the client job jobs are awesome, but when you've got those little gems in there where it's the side projects, the, the, the community-based projects, the, the ones that really, resonates with why you are actually a creative or a designer for me that that clearly shows you, your intent and your interest in, in in our craft um so for me i always find those a bit more exciting i mean that's just personal just personal preference um but i i always find there's a there's you know doing these little, i wouldn't say have your whole portfolio full of side projects and one or two clients but you know a nice balance works well and you'd be surprised the, the feedback you may get as well when the, in these interviews when people see these projects um you know you kind of gone out your way to do these things so um so yeah keep keep uh keep pushing those sort of side hustles for sure um we've got a comment here from oh, it's a tricky i i, I think it's like dot oko vix i hope i got that correct um but i like your icon it looks pretty cool he's asked is this 3d um that we're looking at now i think you maybe just came in and yeah. seen so this this mock-up is actually it's a it's a Photoshop mock-up. It's flat technically, but it's using smart objects and warping around like a 3D image. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to rotate or spin it in space. This is literally just a Photoshop document. If I would want a different angle, I would need to buy a different mock-up of it, uh, which I do have another mock-up of it if I wanted to, to do that. Um, but no, you're, this is just a one-off smart mm. object piece. It's cool though, because like the mock with these mockups that you get, um, whether it's on Adobe Stock or, or any other, you know, uh, site, it looks so realistic, right? Whether it's the shading, what they've done to it. So like, it's interesting you mentioned it 3D because perhaps that's the vibe it gets when you first see, especially if you're new to maybe using mockups. Um, 
Yeah, this so, yeah. one feels so legit. Like I, I sure. use a lot of these mockups uh, to help kind of sell it to a client. Like mm. a lot of, I guess, <clears throat> to answer that question again, like what do creative directors do? A lot of my job is like being a good salesperson. Um, selling to the client, selling to the team, selling the vision. Be a magician. <laughs> being a magician. I wish I was a there magician. <laughs> see how happy uh, that feels so we've got easy he said i still do present projects uh even if i feel established in my craft i just love design that much there we go exactly that's what's about guys like doing it for fun um and actually taking time out to do stuff like that because i realize within our within our world in our space time goes so quick right like that like the stream is going right now but to a point where you almost forget sometimes maybe why you actually are in this space, you know, like maybe a bit biased because we're creators, but I do think with our line of work, we're in the best job ever, right? You're, you're creating stuff, you know, for, you know, because you, you have a talent and you enjoy it and you know how people interpret it is, is obviously up to them, but I think it's, um, it's a cool thing to do. So don't forget to take time out to actually really enjoy it. Um, and you get that more with passion projects I find as well. Yeah, totally. I think, we are very lucky to have a an industry where we're very passionate about what we're able to do, mm. including scribble on a jersey. We that looks cool. You got to do like the Alex the Alex sign signature. Yeah, just <laughs> that Zoro Zoro sort of style, like uh... <laughs> it's not not bad. Um. What are we doing chat? What else is needed? We got like 25 minutes left. So we've got actually, it's funny because going back, I mean, on that top, we've got quite a lot of people experiences about um, age in our space, actually. We don't want to go too off piece on yeah, that's fine. design, yeah. but it's, it's interesting seeing like the, um, everyone's uh, thoughts on it. Um, you know, we've got Dina, um, I'm saying it correctly, or, um, saying about, uh, I would like an entry level position, but not at the age either. They tend to advise for college or graduates and I want to learn new stuff. I may not know. No. Um, I think that's touching on from, from Shauna's experience as well. Um, mm. It's always interesting sort of hearing you guys, you know, first in the community, what, you know, what you experienced or what things you know as well and what you may have seen, um, you know, so um, definitely can keep those, keep those going. But on the topic of design and what you can see now, what are you guys vibing when you see these awesome colors and shapes? Um, can you imagine the brand's called just place logo hair <laughs> honestly <laughs> just like insert i wonder if I I, <laughs> let's see where the helmet was from last time lower nepsum <laughs> just like because we did a helmet mock-up let's see if i have it oh. look at look, dust, dusting off the cobwebs of um oh that's sick i love sup dog I love <laughs> we that. have the little like uh <laughs> we shall not pass logo on there that uh, i thought i put sponsored logos there but no was... That is, that's cool, man. That's fun. <laughs> uh, I guess sub I could dog, use the sub dog on there too. This is a great thing is whenever you have like a bunch of like projects that you've made, you can just mm. place your own logos everywhere. Um, all right. I think that's good enough for right now. Let me, mm. I'm going to go to, I think we need to do like a, a mock-up now or get closer to it. All right. Nice. So I'm going to license this <clears throat> object in 3D. 25 minutes to get us all these incredible things done in dimension might be a, a tall ask, but this is your mission. If you choose to accept it, Alex, it's good. almost mission impossible. I do my best. <laughs> you got this man. Um, this. But if not, then we have another day tomorrow that we can start to jam out more on it. So in days. Okay. Right. That's um, great to see. Um, oh, so I was going to say in, <clears throat> in the chat, it's great to see. So we've got um, Oko Vix, you mentioned he doesn't tend to use um, mock-ups to represent their work, but then you've got Steve who's, and again, it's nice when you guys communicate with one another, um, saying depending on the subject matter, it can look amazing um, and it's a lot more common. So there we go. Just, you know, Alex mentioned it before. Sometimes that can really sell it to the client when they can see things in situ, you know, the fun execution um, in opposed to just, a, you know, say a flap single page um you know piece of artwork so um definitely look into that and 
like Alex is doing now, obviously using Adobe stock where you can get these awesome assets from. Yeah. So right now what I'm doing is I've got oh, such a big canvas. <laughs> what did I do that for? It's like a Christmas bauble, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, it kind of is, right? Really good. <laughs> uh, document settings. All right, I'm going to just make it like a thousand. thousand. All right. All righty. So what I'm going to do here is just let's get to know our object in Dimension. In case you've never used Dimension, and I know we're talking about mockups, you can use Photoshop. You can use Dimension for your mockups. It really depends on what you're trying to do. You can also use tangible mockups. If you have a packaging project, go get a label printed, show it to the client. They would love to like turn it around and feel it in their hands. If you can't use Dimension, totally viable, totally acceptable. Um, what I'm actually going to do here is I want to get to know this object a little bit. I want to see what part of it I want to actually shoot. I'm going to click option one, and then that will give me the top. Option two, three, four. I'm trying to see like specifically. I think something like that might be an interesting approach. So let me just use is that all right? Been a while since I've used Dimension, so bear. <laughs> Lost off the Dimension tool. It's, it's all good. I've played a couple of off. <clears throat> There's a question because I know we're, we're trapped for time as well. Is there a question I can ask whilst you're in that process of of doing it as well from from Christine, okay. uh, who said uh, it was a question for both myself and you. Uh, what is your favorite part of the branding process? And in brackets, and no, Alex, you're not allowed to say when the client receives their brand and they're happy with it. Ha ha. Okay, fine. Got you there, man. <laughs> uh, my favorite part is when things start to click or like you have that like aha moment and you're just like, this is the coolest thing. Like this is going to work. I'm sure yeah. that the client will love it. It's going to resonate. That experience is, I mean, honestly, we're it's such a dopamine rush where you're just like, mm. this is amazing. Like, I think uh, graphic designers and creatives, we crave those moments of delight because if you like look at the chart of like the creative process and you like start projects and you're at a high and it's great and then you start working and you're like, oh no, I'm stuck. And you're kind of at the bottom and then you kind of like work through it and you're like, oh yes, this is a great idea. That's mm. amazing. Like those moments where you're just like, <clears throat> this is so cool. and. That, that I think is what we all kind of live for at the end of the day, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Sweet. No, I mean, that's, that's definitely your perspective, which is, um, I hope it answers your question, Christine. Um, I mean, from, from my part, do you know what? I actually enjoyed that, that early stage where I wouldn't say visual research, but you, if it's a branding project, you know, say in particular we're doing, you know, I tend to draw pen to paper a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes it is going online and, and finding visual research, but I actually enjoyed the, the drawing stages as well. The early stage was just, you know, pen to paper. Um, and it's that early stage where no idea is a bad idea. Um, and if there is a bad idea, just kind of work backwards from that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I kind of have a little fun with, with that idea of just, just wick, not winging it, but just having fun because you don't you don't really know what's what's realistic at this stage. Um, and obviously, as you kind of go through it, then you start to filter it down and and, and really get it down to its purest form. Um, but yeah, hopefully, it answers your your question. Uh, your <laughs> that's tongue twister. Your question, Christine, Christine, I should say. Um, and please let us know what what favorite part of your branding process too. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, I'm trying to like find a cool materiality to bring to this. Um, like ball so i can do a bunch of crazy things with it if i want to they've already separated out the two layers on there and do gold or red on those things you can get funky and fresh with it um i kind of want to just keep it like black because i think with how cool our, our um we've got that lime green but we also got the black happening on our design so maybe i just want both of those to be black i might I want like a, a black synthetic of some sort. Texture is very cool. Let's see here. I'm gonna open this up. How familiar are is chat with Dimension? Have you all used it before? Never used it before? What's your experience been? There we go. Let us know in the chat your vibes. Have you 
be dabbled in that world of the 3D hemisphere. I, I personally haven't actually. I would, I definitely would like to know. I mean, even watching you do this is pretty cool. Um, educate myself on this for sure. Haven't yeah, it haven't can get used my crazy. Mind. You can get mm. very um, dialed with it. It's a I think it's a really great tool for people who are um, like trying to explore the 3D world and want to understand it a little bit better. I think it's a really mm. good tool for that. We've got kind of two different materialities happening here mm. um, in boss color. I can make it darker. No, it feels like it's amazing how like just the definition and the textures and the shape, it, it feels tangible, right? You feel like you want to grab it from the screen and mm -hmm. almost stressful, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then once you start to like press this button up here, it starts to render it out. So you can start to see it like actually kind of awesome come to like fruition. So now that I'm seeing like the real lighting happening on this, mm. could work, could not work. Kind of like that. It feels like there's two different plastics happening on it. Um, I can also adjust the lighting. So in case, chat, in case you're new, uh, environment lighting up here, you can take the, like, there's the default, uh, lighting if you want, and you can apply studio lighting. You can put these like crazy neons on here. This is one of my favorites. Um, not necessarily for this project, but it starts to, you've got some blues and purples and pinks happening in it. Um, yeah, it looks cool. really good on a like a chrome object. Um, I like to light my scenes myself though. So um, what I'm gonna do is uh, save this camera setting by bookmarking it so I can come back to this. Nice. Uh, um, We've got some, um, it's great to see like you guys it, on that topic when you were discussing, um, Alex, about um, experiences with, with 3D. So we've got two lovely comments there. We've got one from Colby who said, um, yeah, I've been diving um, diving deeper into 3D this past year or so. I love the mentions, definitely makes the process very approachable. Um, and then we've got a lovely one from Dena who said, I did some uh, ornaments around Christmas with my logo. It's on my Behance. That was fun. That's awesome to hear. That's awesome. That's very great. Cool. Yeah, Colby, that's that's great news that you're working with it more. I think I saw some of your older streams where you're starting to dabble with it, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm making that up. Um, <laughs> what I'm doing right now is I am essentially making a volume. So if anybody's done photography before in the past, um, what I'm doing is I'm shaping my own light. So what I'm gonna do is make this rectangle and treat it like you would a strobe off the scene. Um, so what I'm doing by this is I'm just moving it around. I'm trying to get it to angle towards the piece and treat it just like you would. Pull out a little bit more, whatever rotate. So I'm a little bit off with this piece. I'm going to move this over, over, pull it up, and then tilt it down. And then I'm going to change the material on it so you can put the glowing material directly on this piece. And now it's like appearing white. But if I was to like, so if I just turn this off right now, it's cube. I have no environmental light on right now. Nothing is happening. It's just a black mm. ball in this space. I can turn on the environmental light now and you'll see with the old thing. It's kind of hard to see probably on my tiny little screen. I can zoom in. Um, Boom. So, I never asked actually. Do I was gonna say what? What are you using? Are you using a desktop, laptop, iPad? What's your weapon of choice right now that you're operating in? I've got an iMac Pro. Um, okay, cool. So it's super beefy. It helps with my render times, especially with like a 3D program like this. So this is just an environmental light. I put on just a directional light, and uh, I'm taking off the that blue green one from earlier. So you used to see just with this one circle light, it's lighting the object, but it's not really giving me what I want. Um, I can now change that and just turn on my cube and you'll see what happens whenever I just light that cube like that. So it's directional now. It's coming from that one source that I've already lit on the side. I can also increase the intensity. Oh, it's on the environmental light. My bad. That needs to turn off. That needs to turn off. That's awesome. So now I have one like direction where the light's coming from. Uh, let's go back to where our bookmark 
play is, see how it goes. Cool, that could be fine. Steam roof doesn't do fine at all. Do you ever find as well as it's when you're obviously fiddling around these tools and then, and then it's something so you know you're you're editing or moving around to say the tool and then looking editing moving looking it's almost like the the surprise of what's going to happen next once you've done it because you never know until you just keep tweaking and tweaking right um until you find what you really want so it's um it's almost like a nice surprise but it's, it's quite cool when you see the final end product yeah absolutely and really what i'm trying to do here is i want like a close-up something ambiguous um something that feels like interesting and now that i'm looking at mm. it this um see if it's rendering or... and alex i'm my man i this is crazy to even say this but we've got like 10 minutes left i don't even That's know how crazy. this this is what happens in the adobe hemisphere world for you guys who watch many adobe lives which hopefully you, you do you realize how quick time flies we're in the space of it um obviously i want to make sure that you have time to do a little bit what you're doing now and even like a nice little recap you know 10 minutes before we um before we wrap up but yeah oh, yeah let's do it so i'm just going to spend through this really quickly i'm going to try to like Sweet. file the the plastic a little bit more and you want the lighting so the computer needs to think a lot whenever it's doing the rendering light and so i'm just trying to turn on the environmental light the directional light i want to see what's happening with this texture because it's kind of ugly super up close the way i'm looking at it um let me see if i can fix some of the uh how big the pattern is it might require me to just like change the material oh that looks crazy that's mother and realize nice. it's mother. <laughs> <laughs> you can get so wild with it you cardboard nothing says tack like cardboard <laughs> Weave, let's see if the weave does. All right, properties offset roughness. If I had a, um, a stress ball, it would definitely look like that, I think. <laughs> I would like to look at that anyway. <laughs> oh no. All right, it's failing me. Do you know what? Just for my, it's my curiosity here. Like, there's a gold one. I think you're just. It was just the one above that you just had. Um. Uh, maybe it's the one. This one there's a game show now. There's like a gold one. Okay. Um. That's the. Oh. Yeah. I think that's the one. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. I mean, you. We can get super wild with it. It's right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's the rattlesnake the, uh, style. Environmental lighting that's doing that. Let's see. Mm. That should change it a little bit. Let's change the material. That's pretty wild. Yeah. I just wanted to change the texture down. I don't know why it wasn't. Why is that? More tile, pattern size. Mm. And. I, you can literally spend like so much time in, in dimension. <laughs> I'm as, I'm as excited watching you like drag and drop and seeing what comes next. Like I feel like it's <laughs> like a, I don't know what's gonna happen next. Um, That's kind of interesting. Ah, yeah. So this is nice like color. the difference between like looking at it rendered and not rendered. Like is mm. kind of night and day. You can't really tell until you like start to render it. And what sure. it's doing is essentially all those little dots start to pop in. That's like the ray trace lighting actually like bouncing off of it. Um, mm. Once you're done rendering it, it will be a lot clearer uh, than what you're seeing right now. Um, I feel like you, you've opened the floodgates now for anyone who's quite new to maybe the 3D rendering part just to have so much fun and just explore and just play around um, oh, and yeah, create your own shapes. And then, and obviously, um, and, if, and if you do create some stuff, you know, add, add it on a Behance page, it'd be cool to, awesome to see and to share the community as well, you know. We'd love to kind of see what you guys are, what you're working on. It's looking good. Cool. Actually, that's that's good enough for right now. Let's see here. I need to environment background. I'm gonna make the background black, maybe. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, I've got my timeline. <laughs> 
you, you, that was that was the mission alex from the start and you've accepted it well i like it it's just <laughs> when, <laughs> and the same thing when you got like a client deadline it's like i've got to make it work gotta do it time goes even slower what made the packs go thank you they were it's like burn cream i think that could work let me is this my home screen i hope it is no it's not okay I'm going to just pull it on it again. Let it render, see how it goes through a little bit. Cool. I'm going to resave that camera. And what I'm going to actually do is take a more, I'm going to move my cube out. Move the cube. I'm going to move that lighting in real time. Whoa. Got Carol, Carol is digging digging your stars, man. She's like, great to see someone playing with uh, <laughs> DN right now. Carol is there for me all <laughs> throughout my dimension streams, all through my Welcome, 36, day, 36 days of type streams. She was uh, there. We've been through veteran. the chicken thing. Uh, you're no stranger to Adobe Live. We love to, that's what we love to see. Yeah, we love to see it. She's always here. She's awesome. Um, cool. So I think. What we're going to do, since we don't have enough time to like properly render this out, I'll do it after the stream, mm. is I'm going to just like take this piece mm. and just screenshot it. And what I'm going to do is uh, just bring it into like Illustrator really quickly. Maybe uh, in five minutes. Yeah, you're good for it. You got four point uh, three. <laughs> yeah, 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 like four minutes. I got four it. minutes. It's fine. Can do this, this is not your first radio. You you know what to do, man. <laughs> now if I can find the right mockup quickly, let's see here. Green. All right, good enough. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, Ooh, really quick. Okay. Paco loves when I get everything done right <laughs> under the wire. He's just trying to do yes. it for Paco. Happy uh, Paco is a good Paco. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so I got this guy, and we'll hold this in here. Small object, sure, cool. Um, what I'm gonna do is take that color flood, solid nice. color, boom, pow. Uh, let's say, huh? like a ninja. I love it. <laughs> just man. like I'm the same. I'm I'm literally yeah. I figured that today actually. We're just like yeah. Your brain just kind of goes in a bit of autopilot, but you just, you know what's what. Yeah, I'm just trying to let's see if we can get this. All right, throw this in the corner. It looks like a website. Wow, so cool. Mm. Uh, box, boom. Box. Now we got that. Um, take this, rotate it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, do it again, again. All right, thank you. Boom, boom, boom. Now that's a equidistant little menu button that goes there. Nice. Super small. Boom. Perfect. And then good old burger menu. Nice. Three three minutes remaining. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, it's literally the countdown song now, isn't it? It's literally you can hear it in your head, Alex. I can, <laughs> I'm not gonna sing my, it for you guys, but yeah. are you my Jimmy Carr? I could be I could be your Jimmy Carr, dude. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> That's looking good, man. Yeah. I'm getting um oh what's that? Oh no, don't is it Fortnite kind of vibes there? Yeah, it's a Fortnite font. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> That's why I know. Skill Roy Bold Check out. Our new buddy game. All right, paragraph, shrink it, 32. Boom. All right, two minutes. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I feel mean. I feel like I'm going to give you another two more hours now, but that's the... That's the beauty sometimes. Isn't it? I get, that's exactly it. And that, that actually leads on quite nicely for, for you guys to definitely check us out for tomorrow because we're back on tomorrow. But... Um, but yeah, we still we've got like a minute and a half. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll do it. Recap phone, but you're quick. good for it. No, you're good. All right. Uh, uh, all right. This needs to be that. Eh. Bullard. 
What? Boom. It Bye. makes it better with the sound effects as well. <laughs> <laughs> We've had your thinking effects and that, like your thinking sound effects, and then now like the um the Mr. Bean in like two seconds, we gotta move really quickly, sort of sound effects. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love the crunch. Like this is my favorite part of anything. All right. Uh cool enough, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Perfect. Just a little overlap. I like uh, that. I like that. That depth. It's so, <laughs> it's so rigged. I don't know why it's all right, whatever. Fine. Everything's fine. Look at that. Boom. Perfect. Save. Nice. Ship it. Vox. Boom. Look at that. Oh, tech company. Oh, Done. Mate. Tech company. That's Boom. it. That's my million dollar, my million dollar creation. <laughs> Take it as you will. All right. So that's with looking a minute good, man. left. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so with a minute left, recap. we got a little logo, you know, a little uh soccer kit. We ended up making our logo, which you can see here in the top left. Um, we made the little quick screen mock-up. We should get to make some stuff in uh, Dimension. We're gonna start playing with some type and stuff tomorrow. We're going to start pulling in even more um, collateral pieces in tomorrow as well. Lots of using the pattern, lots of green coming your way. Lots of fun. I am super excited. Nice. Holy moly, I feel like that was- uh... You've done it, dude. I had sweaty palms, but you made it. I mean, I was nervous <laughs> for you, but you guys, I hope you, <laughs> you did enjoy that. Um, and just to kind of wrap up on that, um, so we'll be back tomorrow, like like Alex has said, for 12 p.m. Pacific for part two of Alex Lazarus's next stream, as he said, where he'll continue to build a futuristic tech brand visual identity system in Illustrator and Photoshop. And just before you leave, Adobe Live will be back tomorrow morning uh, with Sornak Shah on the Adobe Express channel. And um, here you will learn how to create compelling Instagram stories on the easy to use app. So on that note, thank you, Alex, my man. You've been a dream to host, dude. Uh, thank you, of course, to you guys in the chat as well. Without you guys, there is no stream. Um, and of course, to our moderators as well. Um, so on that note, a massive thank you. Um, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good see one. See you later. Bye. Bye.